Hi guys! <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> it's been such a long time since I shared a speed paint with a voiceover like this with you. I felt a bit bamboozled because I usually have like a bigger subject or purpose in my videos uh, with like a defined script and some graphics and stuff and I realized I had to think of something meaningful to talk about. Um, since this is my free space to speak, I'd like to start off by just thanking you guys for sticking around. We have now exceeded the milestone that is 200,000 subscribers! <laughs> Man! <laughs> Thank you guys so much. I really, really, really want to do some kind of milestone video, but I'm not really sure what to do. Like, what do the cool kids do now to celebrate milestones? <laughs> I'm super duper busy at the moment though, but I really hope that I can come up with something exciting for you. Like, seriously, thank you so much, guys. I'm... I think bamboozled is my favorite word today. I'm bamboozled. <laughs> so today we are painting a, actually kind of like a pin-up uh, drawing, which is one of my favorite things to draw in the world. Just pin-up pretty girls. <laughs> and if you're interested in getting the slow two-hour version of this time-lapse, it will be available as part of my upcoming term on Patreon. You will need to sign up to at least the hero tier to receive videos before September 1st. And then you will get all the rewards associated with this piece. If you're watching this video after September 1st, the rewards will be available through my Gumroad. The links are in the description if you want to check it out. So today I wanted to share some of my thoughts and experiences on digital art in general with you guys. I get a lot of questions from new and aspiring digital artists and some of them are often phrased in a way where I feel like people are making digital art a lot more complicated than it needs to be. So today I want to try to demystify digital art a bit so that hopefully you guys struggling with these things or just you curious people out there will have an easier time getting started and improving or at least understanding digital art. So one of the very common questions I get or see everywhere is can I start doing digital art if I haven't learned traditional art first? And the answer is yes, <laughs> of course you can. Digital art is a medium like any other medium. It is quite a different medium, I got to admit that. It's the art medium that has the less in common with the other mediums. But whether you decide to start your journey with pen and paper, watercolors, acrylics or digital or something completely else, it's still just a medium that you will need time to get used to. You will need to spend time familiarizing yourself with the tools and learn the techniques. Learning a new medium though, in my opinion, is not the same as learning how to draw. Let me go in depth with this. Let's say someone wants to be a digital artist and draw comics, it's just an example. But this individual cannot afford a computer or a phone or a tablet or any of the digital art mediums available. Then this person can still practice their drawing skills with regular pen and paper and transfer those skills onto a new medium later on. So even if you do not have the right equipment right now, whether it be for digital art, watercolors, or whatever you want to do in the future, you can still do progress in your drawing skills. However, of course there's a however, when this person then finally one day gets their first drawing tablet, or whatever digital tool they decide to use, they will most likely feel a slight setback in their drawing skills. And this is all because of the new medium that this person has to learn how to use and not an actual setback in their drawing skills. That's a very important difference. So if you ask me, you develop skills in two areas. One in the medium you're using and one in drawing in general. So of course you can start with digital art immediately when you want to start to learn to draw. That was really hard to say when you start learning how to draw. <laughs> it's just a different medium than traditional art. But <laughs> digital art do offer so much more to learn and understand than the other art mediums. So it might seem like an overwhelming experience to get started with compared to simple pen and paper. Which leads me to another question I get pretty frequently. I want to get started with digital art, but I'm getting overwhelmed and I don't know where to start. 
what should I do first? So obviously, first thing you need to do is getting your tool. And I know that I mentioned before that you can practice without the tool, but in this case, I'm assuming that this person is ready to get into the tool and learn the medium. So the first thing you got to do is getting your tool, whether it's a smartphone, an iPad, a regular drawing tablet or a drawing monitor. Then the next thing you should do is finding your drawing program. If you're on your Android phone, many people will recommend using Ibis Paint X or Ibis Paint, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. And if you're on your iPhone or iPad, you can get Procreate. And if you're using a tablet with a computer, there is a little more work to do because there are so many programs. <laughs> I recommend downloading a trial for all of the programs that you find interesting and just try them out. I use Photoshop most of the time, but for other paid software, I can also recommend Clip Studio Paint and Paint Tool Sci. For free drawing software, I recommend trying Medibang or Krita, but there are other free drawing software that you can try out as well. Once you have your art program, get to know it. This is where you start to develop those skills for the medium. And it's okay to do this step in all of the trial versions you have as well, just so you get familiar and find a program that's just for you. <laughs> and while you get to learn your program, you will probably be drawing in it at the same time, right? So while you're experimenting and learning your medium, you're also slowly transitioning your drawing skills into the medium. Don't be discouraged at this point if your art looks different or even worse compared to before trying the new medium, because it will get better pretty fast, I promise you. In terms of getting to learn your new medium or art program, I really suggest that you look into these areas first. Setting up a document for digital drawing. Learn to navigate the program such as zooming, panning, shortcuts, control set. <laughs> How to use layers in your art program, understanding layer blending modes or blending styles depending on what program you're using, and get familiar with some of the brushes. I've made some tutorials covering some of these areas previously and I'll link them in the description below if you want to check them out. Once you've looked into those areas, you should experiment a lot and I also found it super helpful to watch other artists using the same drawing software that I did. But most drawing software today have the same core tools such as layers and blending modes, so you can actually easily just follow along even if it's a different software. I actually recommend watching some slow or real-time drawing to better study others' techniques and see how things work. I offer that on my Patreon, but I also know that other artists do that too on their patrons, and you can also find some real-time drawing here on YouTube, so I totally recommend doing that. And I think those are the best tips I have right now for getting started, like kind of thinking of it like you have to develop your skills in a medium as well as drawing, and it will eventually come natural to you that these things will just be combined. Because it's not very likely that you will develop on just the medium and not on your drawing skills as long as you keep drawing while you try to learn this medium. So it will go kind of like hand in hand and I think that is my best tip for where to start with digital art. Another claim I'd like to demystify about digital art is that some people think it's easier and or not real art. <laughs> well, <laughs> let's first address the fact that digital art is supposedly easy. Digital art is just as hard to learn as oils or acrylics if you have no idea what you're doing. And the fact that people have so many opinions on it and there are so many branches of it just makes it even more hard to understand, not to mention learn. Once you know your way around digital art as a medium, there are definitely things that are a lot easier compared to any of the traditional art mediums. And that is the fact that nothing is permanent. Heck, if you are drawing a landscape and suddenly decide that your canvas is too small and you want to add a big freaking castle, you can just make your canvas bigger in 10 seconds or less. <laughs> You have layers, which allows you to add and remove things in your drawing at any point. And you can even change the entire color scheme in the matter of minutes. I also have a tutorial on that. But you cannot do any of these things 
if you haven't learned how. Just like you can't make a watercolor wash if you haven't learned how to do so. So no, digital art isn't easy. It's just a medium offering a lot more modern tools and a lot more wiggle space. Many are also under this impression that digital art can't be real art because it's digital, because it's just pixels on a screen. And some will claim this based on the fact that you do not have a physical produced painting and others actually think that the computer is doing all the work for you. <laughs> yeah, some people actually think that. I think these claims are based on ignorance and narrow-mindedness. Most artists working in the video game industry, for instance, today, they do digital art for work because it's often less time-consuming, it's cheaper in materials, easier to change based on feedback, as well as being just easier to deliver to your client. It's a modern medium that some people have decided to be mad at and you shouldn't listen to such nonsense. Digital art is a legit medium like any traditional medium if you ask me. They're all equally good, all have pros and all have cons and all require loads of skill to master. And lastly, I'd like to tell you about what it has meant for me to become a digital artist instead of a traditional one. And I also need to throw in a quick remark here because I might often talk about digital art as being the superior art medium or the best choice or whatever, but the truth is I respect all art mediums equally. And I also believe that knowledge in one medium can be transferred and used in another one. Our general understanding of building up a drawing or a painting is a skill that we acquire despite of the medium that we choose to specialize in and is a thing that many art mediums have in common in some way or another. This week I got a memory on my Facebook profile from 2013, seven years ago. It was me posting that I had just ordered a Wacom Cintiq 13 HD, my first ever to be drawing monitor. I had been on a three year soft break from drawing due to studies, but I wanted to pick up drawing again and I wanted to try and focus on digital art. I already had a regular drawing tablet without a screen, but I very rarely used it due to the fact that I felt a disconnect from my art when I couldn't look at my hands when I was working. With this kind of tablet without a screen, you actually look at your computer monitor while your hands are working on the tablet on the table. And that just didn't work for me personally. I could color stuff, but I couldn't like create something entirely from scratch. It, it looked off in any way possible. <laughs> so I ordered my first Wacom Cintiq and guess what happened? No change. I kept drawing on pen and paper because whatever I drew on the Cintiq was the same that I drew with my other tablet. And I was confused and bamboozled AF. <laughs> I had this magical expectation that I think a lot of other people have today, that this tablet would make drawing easier for me and help me improve faster, when in reality I was just as discouraged as before and I actually didn't use it much until 2016. <laughs> I believe it was mostly collecting dust in the first whole year I had it. It's very sad, but it is the truth. So 2016 comes and I'm very much into Undertale at this point. So much in fact that I undusted my Cintiq and created more artwork in less than a year than I had in the past three years combined, if not more. I suddenly had a reason to draw, because I loved being part of this fandom, the community, and my art was actually appreciated. So I kept drawing, and even when I stopped engaging with the fandom, I kept drawing. I had discovered what I was capable of with digital art. This medium and I, we were a match made in heaven, okay? So I started teaching others here on YouTube how to learn this medium as well. And in late 2017, I discovered that I wanted, no, 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 I needed to do this for a living. Switching to digital art has made me a better traditional artist as well. It has made me a more curious artist and given me a boost of confidence. 
With traditional art, I used to, and still do actually, get a lot more conscious about every single stroke I'm about to make. So I often hesitate a lot, spending tremendous amount of time on this, or even end up putting my sketchbook away entirely. With digital art, I put a lot less considerations into it because I can undo any action I do not like. I can experiment freely because I can edit it all the way later if I don't like it. I can make copies of my work and I feel like I have complete creative freedom with this medium. And the fact that it's such a modern medium that also gives you a lot of career options just adds to the pros of going digital. I'm not saying this is the best art medium in the world, but I am saying that it is the best art medium for me. I hope this video gave you some insight into this digital artist world, as well as some demystification, demystify, de, hmm, de, hmm, demystify some of the claims and or general confusion about digital art. Remember to check out my Patreon if you'd like to support my work, but you can also support me for free if you just hit that little like button. It would really mean the world to me. Thank you so much for watching guys and for helping me reach over 200,000 subscribers here on YouTube. It's insane and I have no idea what to do <laughs> with this. <laughs> Until next time guys, take really good care. Bye!